A tear drainage bypass surgery is medically referred to as a DCR, or more technically, a dacryocystorhinostomy. In lay terms, this is literally a procedure to bypass an obstructed tear drainage system. Our eyes actually make tears in a tear production gland that's located at the lateral aspect of our brow. Every time we blink, our eyelids aren't just flopping up and down, they're actually squeezing the tears towards the area in the corner of our eye next to our nose. In our eyelids, there is an opening in our upper and lower lid where the tears are picked up, and then they actually drain into a, an area here called the nasolacrimal sac. They then drip down into the back of our nose or the back of our throat through a pathway called the nasolacrimal duct. Over time, and for reasons we don't truly understand, that distal tear drainage pathway can become obstructed through low-grade inflammation or de decreased tear production. If that occurs, in the past, doctors tried to go through the obstruction, but their outcomes were not very good, with about a 50% success rate. The DCR procedure was created to bypass that obstruction and create an alternate pathway for the tears to drain. Success with modern tear drainage bypass surgery is in the range of 93 to 94%, much better than the older approach of going through the obstruction. During the procedure, a flexible silicone stent is placed between the upper and lower eyelids and passed down into the new pathway. The reason this is done is because when we create a surgical opening or pathway, our body's natural tendency is to try and close that off. If we put something in that pathway, it will allow that pathway to remain open. Recovery from the dacryocystal rhinostomy or tear drainage bypass surgery is pretty quick. Um, even though we put people to sleep in most situations for the procedure because it's difficult to numb up the nasal pathway, the procedure itself only takes about 30 to 40 minutes to perform. We block out about an hour of time because we need to put our patients to sleep and wake them up in a safe fashion. Following the surgery, an individual should expect post-operative puffiness as well as bruising, somewhat similar to an eyelid procedure that can last for anywhere from 7 to 10 days after the procedure. For a couple of days following the surgery, we ask the person to go home and apply cold compresses. It sounds kind of funny, but we actually recommend frozen peas in a Ziploc bag because it conforms nicely to that irregular space and works as a great cold pack. By the third day after the procedure, most individuals can go back to work, perform light duty activities, and go back to driving their car. So the downtime is really just a couple of days.